Hello, Snackers. My name is Kareem Iskander. I'm a lead technical advocate with Cisco Learning and Certification. Welcome to episode 130 of Snack Minute. In case you haven't noticed, Matt is missing today, but we have a special guest host with us for the next few episodes. Hank, welcome to the show and thanks for coming back on. Of course, Kareem. Thank you for having me and Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, I'm excited to be here for a handful of episodes sitting in Matt's chair. So what I've got here on my screen is I'm actually connected into our NSO environment inside of our data center, uh, one of our data centers that provides the learning classes. So if you go and take like a, a the Encore or a security learning training class from Cisco, like this is this is the system behind one of those data centers. And so we're going to look at how I can use this to check for compliance for this vulnerability across our environment. So if I do a show devices uh, brief, we can see kind of the chunk of devices that are supported on this system. And so you can see that we've got lots of different devices. We've got access switches and terminal servers and out of band management switches, lots of different components that are involved. And so what I want to do is I want to make sure all of these iOS devices are, are compliant. Um, this will take, take uh, advantage of two features that are built into NSO. The first one is our device templates, which is where we can build configuration templates. And the second one is compliance reports, where we can actually check for compliance against a template. And so let's walk through kind of how this gets built out. So like any good uh, network uh, tool here, we're going to go into config mode. And I'm going to create a new device template. So I'm going to say devices template, and we'll call this uh, 2024 uh, snack minute, right? So we'll call it that. And then underneath here, a device template is a, we're going to apply this to a bunch of different devices. Every device in NSO has a NED or a driver that knows how to talk to that device. And we can see references to them over here kind of in this table. And so this particular one is all about those Cisco iOS devices. So I'm going to go ahead and say NED ID, Cisco iOS CLI 6.69. That's the version of the NED I've got on this system. Now that I'm in here, all I have to do is kind of implement what is the configuration I want the devices to have. Right, and so I'm going to say config, and I want them to say IP HTTP server false, false. Right, I want it turned off, and I also want IP HTTP secure server also to be. Oops, I can't type today. Also to be false. And so if I look at the configuration I just did, right, it's pretty simple. I've got my template name calling it snack minute. We know the device that I want to make manipulation on, so iOS devices. And I just want to make sure that these two features are both set to false. That's all I'm after. And so with NSO, I've got to commit that change in. And so I've saved that as a new template. But it hasn't been applied yet. And I could just take the template and go and apply it. But I want to do a compliance check first, right? Let's go see if I actually have any problems in my environment. And so to do that, we'll create what's referred to as a new compliance report. So compliance reports, report, there we go. And then I will call it the 2024 snack minute report. And so there are a lot of different things these compliance reports can do, but I'm gonna use the feature where I can take a compliance report to check a group of devices based on um, a template that's created. So it's called a compare template report. And then you just tell it which template do you want to compare. So it's my 2024 Snack Minute template. And then I have to tell it what um, group of devices I want to compare against. And so I just hit a question mark here. So you can see that I've got all of the different groups of devices. Now, I, um, we leverage Netbox imports to make sure that we've got all of our devices in there, which is why all of my groups start with like Netbox inventory. And so the group I'm going to use for this demonstration is this one here. It's the basically all of my out-of-band management pieces. So this will cover out-of-band management switches and terminal servers. So that's the, the point for here. So I'm going to say Netbox, Inventory, OOBM, MGMT, out-of-band management. So I want to compare to that. And then that's really it. So I've created, oops, I've created my, uh, my template or my compliance report. I'll go ahead and commit that in. So NSO now has it and I'll exit back out of config mode. All right, so I've got the 
the uh, I've got the template, I've got the compliance report. All that's left is to actually go run the compliance report. What I wanted to ask you actually is, and this is maybe we step up, just a, take a step back from a compliance report perspective. In the compliance report template itself, does it have the different checks that it's going to go and and check, or or what's can we see what's in the compliance report? So it is going to check for, um, it, it's going to check all of the devices that are part of that group, right? So I said my out of band management group, and then I gave it the template I created. And that template said, hey, go make sure that IP HTTP server is false and secure server is false. So this compliance report is just checking that that configuration is actually applied to the devices. There are, we could build a compliance report to check lots of other things as well. But this specific one was just this one problem I want to check for. So you're actually just comparing what's there as opposed to saying, here's a template. I know I need to turn off these two features in in my OX, I, iOS XE. I just can go ahead and apply it. Is that is that what's happened? Like, couldn't you have just taken the template and applied it directly without checking? Yeah. Since you know you need to turn Absolutely. these off. Absolutely. So yes, um, the reason I went this direction is oftentimes um, when we're asked to check for a security vulnerability like this, um, mm -hmm. management, right, our folks, they want to be able to see a report, something that shows, hey, are we in compliance or which devices are not in compliance? And so applying the template is kind of like the next step we'll do afterwards. But this is going to give us the ability to generate a report and highlight any devices that are out of compliance. Um, because Understood. some organizations may also have certain change windows, right? So we want to, we, we can do a compliance check anytime, but I, I have to schedule the actual configuration change. And so it's kind of, if we, if we think about kind of um, change management requests or if organizations have like that full ITIL approach they have to do, this gives us the right. ability to say, hey, here's a compliance check I can do. So let's run our compliance report. And so I'm going to go ahead and do compliance, compliance, Ooh, I can't, too many letters. There we go. Reports and then report. And so I've got a few different ones. The one I'm going to do is the one we just created. And you'll see in here, I've actually, um, these reports, so this one here, CVE 2023, that's the actual CVE for this vulnerability. That's the one I actually built in the report and it tests the entire environment. Um, I did a demo for my team uh, for the same thing over here. So that's what that report is. But the one we're doing for us here is this compliance report here. So the 2024 snack minute. And then if I hit a question mark here, you can see I can just say, I want to run this report. Um, we can actually set up these types of compliance reports using automation and API calls to NSO to run every Friday if we want it. So there's a lot of right. kind of ways we can extend this feature for more, more uh, useful pieces. Um, the other things I can do once I run, I can say, OK, I can check from and two times. Um, generally, when we do compliance, I want to check like right now. But there certainly are use cases for compliance reports to say, hey, I want to go check on this status as of like two months ago, or were we compliant when this vulnerability came out? Like there's all sorts of things that we can do with those types of dates. The other thing is we can give it a title. So I can say I'll title this report. Uh, we'll call it Kareem's report. And then this out format one is pretty interesting. So the report results can either be represented as an HTML web page. Now, I will say it's a very boring HTML web page, but it kind of would render as like an HTML page. Um, it can be raw text, so it's just kind of pure plain text. Or it can actually render the results out as XML, which is useful if we are going to kind of take our compliance reports and pull them into some other system. right? Because it's structured data, we could actually kind of tie this into a larger type of a structure. But we'll just do a basic text report right now. And I'll go ahead and run it. And it's going through, it's checking all of those devices that are in that group against the, the comparison we have here. All right. And so the output here that I get is I get an ID number. So that's the report results ID number for this run of the report. We can see the compliance status was violations. And so I have some devices that have a, are in violation of this compliance report. And we can see that it checked 45 devices. If I want to get the actual report results, you can see it gives me a location. Um, the, uh, the NSO server has a web engine for it. And so it's built in to kind of have you grab it through the web page to kind of pull it down. So I'll grab the path for that and I'll switch over here to my login where I'm logged in. And we'll say, I'm going to go ahead and oops, let's see. There, 
I just put the path in. And so this pulls up the actual report. And so remember, I asked for it to be in text. So this is just a plain text. But if I'd said HTML, it would look a little different. If it was XML, it would all be tagged. Sure. But what do I get? I get the I get the date that it was ran. I get who ran it. So I ran it here. We get kind of a summary detail. We can see the template discrepancies. So we can see discrepancies in device. And so I have a list of devices. So it looks like I've got four of my terminal servers that currently are out of compliance. And then if I scroll down a little bit, I actually get a nice diff view that shows every one of the devices like what's out of compliance. And we can see that, oh, it looks like I've got the HTTP server turned on as true on these devices and it's supposed to be false. And so I'm out of compliance on these devices. So this report could then be handed in and say, okay, it does look like we have a few devices that are in, out of compliance. And then ideally, like you'd be told to go fix it, which is what we'll do next, is I'll show how I can use that same template to fix this problem. This is actually makes a lot of sense. I, uh, I'm, again, I'm connecting all the dots because I, you know, a DevNet expert is top of mind. So like, I know like under the hood is, uh, you know, some type of Yang model that's being called out here that, uh, talking to the XE devices, pulling that, you know, via NetConf likely and, and and doing the magic with NSO. So it's, you're putting all of the concepts together for me. So I appreciate that. Um, and I'm sure snackers out there who are studying for the DevNet expert are kind of putting it all together as well. And having that knowledge of how NSO works under the hood is, is helpful for any of these pieces. But I will say for those snackers out there that are, are maybe not quite ready for DevNet expert and are like, oh, this is just like this requires a lot of pieces. Um, look at what I did. Like there was no coding involved. I didn't have to do any right. Yang, right? The configurations that I applied here in NSO were really just very simple and they look a lot like, um, here, I'll actually do a show run so we can look at like the template. So if I do a show running config, devices, template, uh, there we go. We can see this This is the template I created, right? So fairly straightforward, looks a lot like a configuration. And so NSO is great for automation for those of us that are ready and want to dive into kind of those more advanced features. But also, this is kind of an example of how you don't need any of that ability just to use this and get a lot of benefit out of the tool as well. So, all right. Well, let's finish this up as I think we're probably coming to the end of everybody's snack here. You've, who Everybody's out there finishing up their pretzels and their, their goldfish. And so let's <laughs> say we get the report back and someone says, okay, well, let's go ahead and fix those violations. Well, very easy to do. I can go back into configuration mode and I can say devices, uh, template, and then we can see what template do I want. So 2024, oh, hold on, actually, I'm still a little on my own one here. So it's devices, device, group. <laughs> I have to say what group I want to apply the template to. And so we're gonna do that same netbox inventory out of band management and then apply template other, what I was doing before would have actually changed, like gone in and edited the template. I didn't want to do that. I want to go ahead and apply the template called template name 2024 to this group, right? And so here I can use any of my groups to apply that same template to. So I'll go ahead and apply it and we'll see, ooh, some interesting resort. Uh, uh, okay, so the reports come through here. So I have a lot of devices in that out of band management group. Um, some of these devices are actually staged. They haven't been deployed to the data center yet, which is why some of these are coming for, hey, no capabilities found. It's because they, they haven't been absorbed yet. They're still getting uh, kind of deployed to the data center. But if we go and we look, here's an example of where we applied the template to one of the devices that was out of compliance. And so it took that same template and tried to apply it to every single one of my out-of-band management devices. Um, and then I get the outputs to see kind of what the results are. I can then do a show config, right? And this will show me all of the actual changes that that template wants to make to the network. And so what do we see is after applying it to the 45 devices, it was only those four devices that were out of compliant where it's gonna go through and say, okay, well, we'll go ahead and we'll turn off HTTP server on those devices. Now, for those of those of the snackers that aren't uh, as familiar with NSO, NSO is kind of a two-stage approach. And so I've applied the template to the devices, but until I commit it, these changes aren't actually pushed to those network devices. Um, but this gives me the ability to kind of check that. And then I can do the final step of commit. I can commit my changes out. And this will push all of those changes to bring us back into compliance out to the network. 
Um, it will take it just a second to go ahead and push this out to all those devices. All right, that's done. And then I can go through, if I want to verify, I can just rerun my compliance report. So we'll say Kareem's report, and we'll say, this time we'll call it fixed. So I'll rerun it. And so now we should see no violations come back from this re compliance report. So we can then, if we think through kind of this workflow process, we test for it. Hey, we've got some violations. We fix the violations. We rerun our report. And now we can go back and say, look at that. We now have no violations. We're fully compliant with what we were after. And because these reports can be run anytime, we could schedule these through one of our schedule tools or an automation type of a framework to always make sure we're in compliance, that nobody goes in and mistakenly turns on a service that we don't want. This is really powerful. No questions. It's pretty clear. Um, I just want to um, say thanks, Hank. This is kind of puts it all together for us. Um, Snackers, actually, if you're interested in learning more about NSO, uh, one of the one of our popular learning path in Cisco U is getting started with NSO, and we can post a link here for you. But go check that out. And uh, Hank, thank you for an awesome demo, and I'm definitely looking forward to hosting the rest of the episodes with you for uh, uh, the next couple episodes. So thanks, Hank. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Kareem, for inviting me to kind of sit in Matt's seat for a little while. And thank you to all the snackers for kind of joining us here in the new year and checking out a little bit about uh, how NSO can help you with your compliance tasks. We'll see you next time.